Howdy folks out there. Welcome to our live stream uh, for our you stream, I stream, we all stream for live stream. We have uh, all three of us here today, uh, Joe Elser and Travis Lopes. And uh, we're going to go ahead and get started so that we can get into the content. I'm going to have quite a few slides to work through. Looks like we have about eight people out there on our YouTube. Do remember that it's about three, 15 seconds or so lag between what's live and what you may type into comments. So we'll be keeping an eye on the comments. We've got Travis, I'm sorry, we got Jen and Elaine in our chat keeping a track on our comments, and uh, we're going to go and get started. Alrighty then. Let's see what I do on demo screen. Ah. There it goes. Okay. All right, so tonight you're here for you stream, I stream, we all stream for live stream, getting started with live streaming from home on a budget. Uh, we are WordPress St. Petersburg. Come on, little. There we go. <laughs> and we meet every... Uh, the first and third Tuesdays, and well, right now on live stream as, well, as we're being quarantined. But uh, normally we would meet at the Suncoast Developers Guild at 2220 Central Avenue. Hopefully we'll get back there again someday soon. If you've never been to our meetup, please go to meetup at meetup.com, WordPress St. Petersburg. Our website is wptampabay.org. We have a Slack chat, a Facebook group, and a meetup links for all of the other meetups uh, that happen across Tampa Bay. Right now, Brandon and Tampa are on hiatus, but hopefully they'll start live streaming too. So we'll see. All right. I am Jim True. Uh, my Twitter handle is at Jim True, JimTrue.com. I'm a support engineer at Gravity Forms. I'm also the community support lead at the Pods Framework. You can get to Pods at Pods.io or at Pods Framework. Joe Elzer, uh, he goes by Joseph Joe Elzer, is at Tuggy TV. He's got a Twitch channel there, Twitch TV, Tuggy Zero TV. And then uh, you're working on another uh, educational tutorial stuff. Do you want to go ahead and talk about yourself, Joe, real quick? Yeah, um, I actually am a, a manager and a DJ of a strip club <laughs> here in Tampa. Um, but... Uh, Outside of that, then I've just recently started working with, um, I've got a buddy who has an RV inspection company, and he's trying to put together um, some educational courses, and with that, there's going to be a lot of websites that are going to be built, and so he's conned me into trying to learn WordPress, so I've kind of been jumping in as hard as I can and, and trying to learn, uh, but um, that's with the uh, my RV resources.com that we're working with. But, awesome. Okay. All right, and we've also got Travis Lopes on here. I guess switch my screen again. Uh, he and from Four Gravity. He's a developer at Gravity Forms, and he's the owner of the Four Gravity, which is another uh, plugin framework that creates add-ons for Gravity Forms. Uh, do you want to talk about yourself a little bit, Travis? Travis is going to be on here because he's had some streaming experience and a lot of other sound et cetera experience, and could be good for fielding some questions. <laughs> It's been a, about a decade since I've done streaming heavily. Back like before, even like Twitch was really a thing. It was still like Justin TV. So oh. hopefully, hopefully a good amount of my knowledge like is still applicable. Good. But yeah, like I, I work over at Rocket Genius every day at Gravity Forums, and then also I run uh, for Gravity, which we have like a suite of Gravity Forms add-ons, which do things from uh, generating PDFs based on form submissions, uh, locking down your form data and like automating uh, deletion and exporting of entries. And be sure to check out, I, I'm sure Jim will, Jim will mention after this, hopefully I'm not cutting him off, but uh, the second meetup of next month, uh, the third Tuesday in May, we're going to be doing an advanced uh, Gravity Forms workshop on AMA. So come armed with your Gravity Forms questions and I will answer them. Yep, sounds good. All right, so let's get started on our talk tonight. We are getting started with live stream. So, oh, sorry, I went too far. Went too fast on my little browser screens there a second. Let me go back one. Hang on. Come on, you. Sorry, trying to get the, there we go. Okay, getting started with live stream. Uh, why would you video chat? Uh, we're going to basically talk about what we're going to be talking about tonight. Why would you video chat? How could you take an existing business to video? We're going to be talking about video conferencing versus streaming, uh, where to stream, browser-based streaming, software for streaming, 
software to stream with Mac and PC and some demos. Uh, both Joe and I have some demos set up for uh, his favorite platform and my favorite platform. Uh, we're going to talk about equipment, cameras, microphones, and lighting, and then we will field all of your questions. So why video? Why not? We're in quarantine and you've still got to work, keep your office connected, maintain your meetings. So this is one of those kind of situations where a lot of people are having to pivot and change their businesses from a face-to-face -face business into a video online type of business. And this is the perfect time for things like that. Uh, lawyers and accountants, typically they are used to meeting one-on-one -on -one with their clients anyway. So the only change here is that you meet one-on-one -on -one with your clients in video chat charged by the hour. And that works for any consultant. You can actually set up this really simply with um, Google Hangouts or Google Meet uh, with your Google Calendar, integrate it with Calendly, have them book a meeting with you, and have them automatically charge just from that alone or using Square Up. So we can talk about some of those that are ask us anything in two weeks. Uh, we can talk about how to get how to ramp some of your businesses online pretty quickly. Uh, coaches, trainers, therapists, if you run group fitness classes or group therapy or one-on-one -on -one therapy, doing those through a video conferencing setup is absolutely perfect because you can basically be in front of the people, show them how to do things. You can keep an eye on their form the whole bit. Uh, teachers, cooks, knowledge experts, you can stream your classes. Uh, you can get interaction to your class through chat and you can create video content for later, which you can use to promote your, your business. So, Video conferencing versus streaming. The primary difference in those two platforms is audience and the access to the content. Uh, video streaming or video conferencing is two or more people in a video chat, typically private and not public. All connected people are in the video chat so all participants can see and hear each other. Some examples of that are Skype, uh, Meet, Team, Microsoft Teams, uh, Zoom, a lot of people have been using Zoom, but there's been a lot of issues lately with the Zoom bombing. But they've been doing very specific things to try to combat that. And for streaming, it can be one or more people watching your stream or one or more people on the stream talking. So like right now, we've got three people on our stream, but it could just be one of us or it could be four like we do for the Ask Us Anything. But the intended audience is to be as many viewers as possible. Uh, and these can be public, as in like stream to YouTube, where they could be subscribed connections, like Twitch can be live, or it can be a subscribed connection where you actually subscribe and pay uh, your, uh, what do you call it, your streamer for the content that they're streaming. And the same thing can be done with YouTube as well. Uh, streaming means pushing out to streaming platforms, which are engineered to actually handle that kind of content in a much more uh, conducive way to actually having a good feed. That's why, you know, like when we're streaming on YouTube, we're like 15 seconds lagged because that lag is actually handled by the streaming platform and the software to actually make sure that you guys are getting a good uh, interaction with us. So when you're talking about video conferencing, what I wanted to actually highlight here, and we're just going to talk about these briefly. Let me get rid of my picture in picture because I'm blotting some of the uh, screen here. Um... These first four, or the first three that I listed there, did I miss one? I must have. Because I could have sworn there was one other one in there that was actually doing it. I think it may be GoToMeeting. The first four of these have actually opened up their premium products to be free through the month of July because of the whole COVID-19 quarantining. So Google Meet is Microsoft's um, new video conferencing platform, it can be, as they advertise it, 10 to 10,000. Uh, I don't think it can actually handle that many. I wouldn't know if I would actually want to watch a screen with 10,000 little heads on it, uh, all in that Brady Bunch mode, but uh, I'm sure that they'll play, handle as much as they can. But it's a nice software package. If you are a Gmail or a G Suite, it, uh, you can get the freemium platform, which was the one that you can get for free through July. I actually signed up for it, and it comes with like it comes with all of the stuff that Slack gives you, but it also gives you the meet the. Uh, sorry, did I say Google Meet? I meant Microsoft Teams. I got flip flop there. So I was talking about Microsoft Teams. I'll go back and talk about Google Meet in a minute. Uh, Microsoft Teams is the first time I ever signed up with it, and it's that's the full Slack replacement by Microsoft. And it connects into all of their platforms. But yeah, they're, I think they optimize for about 100 people on the screen, though, at once. Uh, 
Uh, you can share screen both guests and other people you can lock and control and do all kinds of like proper video conferencing protection. Google Meet is the business level of Google Hangouts. Uh, Google Meet is a, again, 50 to, is, I think they optimize for 50 guests, but again, they also have the option for sharing screen and it is free and through July. Uh, Cisco Web WebEx is the one I'm used to using back in the old day, and they are optimized for about 100 guests as well. They're also free through July. They have been known primarily for webinars. And uh, so they're, it's, they're worth checking into. Zoom TV, I'm going to give you a little more details on that one. They allow 100 participants on the free, but only for 40 minutes. If you pay for the plan, uh, the, the, uh, the first level tier plan, you can have 100 participants as long as your call is. You cannot record, though, for a specific amount of time. And if you want to stream from Zoom TV, because this question came up, if you want to stream uh, from Zoom TV to YouTube, you have to buy their webinar plan, which is $40 a month. And uh, one of the options that came up that someone, uh, I think Joe, you actually mentioned this one to me, was the Discord. Uh, and I, there's been a big push towards this as well from students because students are used to using Discord because they either look, use it when they're on all of these stream Twitch games and stuff like that. And it's a free platform. It's secure. And you can have up to 50 uh, people in your video chat or in your chat at the same time and, and have a, a classroom with it. So it's one also worth looking into. Takes a little bit of setup to do, but it's not that bad. So that was our video conferencing bit. Do you guys have any comments on any of those? Find any 13-year-old kid. He can set you up a, a Discord room in about 10 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> very true. Very true. A lot of it, and I, I'm also going to try to link to a couple of extra additional YouTube tutorial videos that have like kind of like an overview of a lot of these different things. It just may be a little later this week. So, okay, let me get back over here. All right, so now let's talk about video streaming and destinations. Uh, when you're talking about video streaming, we're talking about streaming our content out to a much larger audience, and that would be like to YouTube. Um, YouTube Live, Facebook Live, uh, Twitch TV, uh, Twitter Live, Periscope, LinkedIn Live, and Vimeo. So what we're going to be looking at first is going to be the browser-based streaming. And that means that all you really have to do is go to the browser, connect to the browser website, sign up, and uh, put in your information and you can pretty much be working within about a minute or so. I was going to do a demo of BeLive but I could not get it working on my Chrome so it would not access my camera whatsoever so I can't really give a recommendation for that one. Uh, it has a the maximum number of guests that you can have in the call with you. I think it's it's just two and you can share your screen and it can stream out to YouTube, Twitch, and Facebook Live it's free for two guests. It's $24.99 a month for up to four guests. So that would be four people, including yourself. Uh, they have a thing called a green room as well. And I'm going to show you that kind of a sample inside StreamYard. Most of these kind of setups are designed to be a little more professional. So like how we've got, uh, you know, we've got our little picture in picture down in the corner. Or like when we were all talking together, we had like three little, you know, our little lower thirds underneath. All of these are designed to give you that kind of a configuration uh, without a lot of work. And uh, StreamYard is the one I checked out last weekend, and I was actually really impressed with it. It has a maximum number of guests of six. Uh, you can share your screen. It can stream out to YouTube Live, uh, Twitch, Facebook Live, Periscope, and LinkedIn Live. And it is free uh, for $20 a month. You can... Uh, record your calls for longer periods of time. You have unlimited streaming and you can have up to 10 people in your green room, but still only four people on the on the screen at the same time. The way StreamYard works is it basically creates a green room where you you give a link to your people. They take that link and then they sign up and they just basically look, connect to their camera and their microphone and then they're inside your light stream call. So we're gonna do a real quick demo of StreamYard, which is from a recorded session from earlier today. So you can kind of see what it looks like. Hi there. Going to give you a quick overview of the StreamYard interface. Uh, down here at the bottom, you can see the current uh, 
screens that you can share. Uh, my camera, my shared screen. If I click my shared screen, it'll automatically pop in here. Um, any callers that you would actually have on the call would also be down here, up to three. Uh, you can only have three people join the call at one time and a stream yard. Everyone else would be sitting down here in the waiting room or the green room as they call it. Uh, over here to the right, during your live stream, your comments will actually show in this area and you can click them and they'll automatically be added here. Um, your banners is a way to add additional information on the screen. Uh, as an example of a banner, you just click them basically to show or hide them. You could use them to say things like click to subscribe and follow our channel. The brand tab uh, is meant to give you more control over the colors. You can set the brand color, change the style of the banners. You can change the logo up here if you had a paid account. But since we don't, we can't do that. The overlay is just here. You can change that graphic yourself and you can also change the background that's showing in the back back here. Pretty straightforward, um, fairly simple. You can get started in less than a minute. Okay, so that was a rather short brief intro of it. I also sent a uh, feed from uh, StreamYard out to our YouTube as an unlisted and I will link that in as well so that you can kind of see the quality. I wasn't thrilled with the quality of the video on StreamYard but I thought for the configuration and setup anybody could do kind of like a produced show very easily with that. And uh, that's why I, I wanted to show you guys how it worked. Uh, the other one we looked at that's a browser-based streaming is called Lightstream Studio. It's a little more complicated, as in like a lot more complicated, but uh, it's free. And it's free for four people on the call. Uh, you can share your screen. It can go to YouTube Live, also go to Twitch and Facebook Live, and I believe Mixer. Uh, it's free, however, if you want uh, higher quality video, it's going to be $20 a month. And when you go to $20 a month, that actually allows you to stream to multiple destinations at once. Uh, StreamYard, if you pay for the $20 a month, you can get rid of all of their branding and put your <clears> own <throat> branding into the call. Sorry, I meant to mention that. In Lightstream Studio, I'm going to show you that demo now. Uh, I didn't do a lot with it because I honestly didn't have time to figure out most of their little screen setups, but we're going to talk about more of those kind of configurations when we, when we go into OBS and uh, Bcam Live. So here's our Lightstream demo. This is Jim. I wanted to show you off a demo of Lightstream's back end. Uh, in this particular case, you have your scenes down here at the bottom, your sources over here to the left, or your layers as they call them and then any chat etc would be over here since we're not actually physically online there would be nothing here uh, you can invite guests right here with the copy invite link and they'll be showing up in the green room right here you can just drag them into the chat um, there are no templates that i can see to automatically lay out the screen so it looks like you would have to do that kind of stuff yourself um, you would create the scene and then do those templates but you have more power with light stream the Audio output's only going to be 720p though, so that's going to impact your broadcast a little bit too. So, just thought I'd show you the background. Uh, here is another version of the scene with a little tiny window and a uh, screen share of like my keynote again. And that's about it. Okay, so that was our demo of the browser-based streaming. Again, that's a way to get started quickly because you can just use your video camera that you have on your computer and whatever the mic is. and it's a quick way to do kind of like a talk show or an interview or something of that nature, or if you're going to just do a demo of showing off something yourself. I was really the most impressed with StreamYard because I liked the way their interface worked. Uh, I just wasn't impressed with the video output. Uh, and Lightstream Studio doesn't go higher than 720p, so it's I don't highly recommend that unless... But I think they're going to be going to uh, 1080p later on. We will find out if that actually happens or not. So now we're going to talk about um, software-based streaming. And we're, I didn't put on here Linux OS, but figure that if anything works on Apple, it also has a Linux client, except for Ecamm Live, so I can't say that for sure. So the three we're going to be talking about are OBS and Streamlabs, Ecamm Live and Wirecast Studio. Wirecast is ridiculously complicated, so I'm going to talk about it first. Um, it's not cheap. 
it starts at six hundred dollars a month, but it is designed to be professional professional grade quality streaming software. It's the stuff that your broadcasters usually use at TV studios and stuff like that. It's designed to work with as many interfaces as possible. Um, with that one, their free version. They have a free version, or did I mistype? Yeah, it has a free version, I guess. No, that can't be right. I think I put that in the wrong window. I did. I ignore that on the number of guests. They can do up to eight, I believe. Uh, they have a Mac client and a Windows client. They can stream out to YouTube, Facebook, uh, Twitch, Twitter TV, or Twitter Live, and Vimeo. Uh, I didn't install the software because I, I didn't really want to go that crazy in the one. So the one we're going to talk about as far as recommending for Windows users would be OBS and specifically the Streamlabs. Uh, and I'm going to let our, our OBS expert actually be talking about this one. So uh, whenever you're ready, Joe, to throw your uh, screen share in, go for it, and I will switch us over to that one. Um, Let's see. It's not showing me. Oh, in Skype? Yeah, let's see. It's the, oh, you got it. Okay, cool. Let me just add your. Which am I sharing? It didn't show me which one I'm sharing. Yeah, give me just a second. Um, it looks like you're sharing your browser window right now. That's what there I'm talking. Now I'm seeing it. Okay. Hang on a second. Right. I'll shift you over there. Hi there. Going to give you a quick overview of the StreamYard interface. Uh, down here at the bottom, you can see... Sorry, I didn't mean to play that one again. Here we go. Sorry about those guys. Give me just a second to get the right thing on the screen. There we go. Okay, cool. Now we got you on there, Joe. Let me see if I can get okay. your other camera on here, too. Let me slide this out of my way there. Uh, one of the things I love about uh, Stream OBS is uh, the options. Is for all the different places that you might want to stream at, you also have it with here. You can go into your settings. You can see Twitter, Mixer, Facebook Live. Um, Restream. Restream is actually another software that will allow you to stream to multiple sources at once. That was one of the, one of the great things um, you can use with it. Also, um, you can, you know, if you happen to be streaming on YouTube or Facebook and, you know, somebody is complaining that, they, you know, your stream is, is choppy or something, um, you can always come in into your output and lower your, your bit rate so that, you know, on the fly real quick so that somebody that can adjust for that. I love it also. It works well with the stream deck. If you, you can see here on uh, my stream there. That you know, I can with a flick of a button just switch from one scene to another. This would be my normal gameplay, and then this would be with my gameplay with my camera. If I wanted to take a break, I hit that little button there, slide back to the back button, and then and so on and so on. Um, the Elgato Stream Deck works really, really well with OBS, and it's basically just a macro button that you you know, a little programming, and you can set it up to change the different scenes that you might want to do. Um, uh, there's a lot of... The hardest thing to set up with OBS. Honestly, I didn't find... There, there's enough YouTube videos out there to help you uh, get set up with it um, that I really didn't have any trouble at all. Like, I really... It was pretty much... I downloaded it, watched a couple videos, set my settings com in comparison with theirs, um, I've had to go back and adjust my bit rate a little bit. Sometimes my bit rate was p pushing a little bit too high. Um, but th there again, you know, you can adjust that on the fly. That just depends on other people's internet as well. Because if, you know, if they've got bad internet, they're not going to be able to watch you as well if you're at a higher bit rate. If you lower your bit rate, then they, you'll be able to catch them as well. But, um, you know, the biggest thing that I love about streaming, and, you know, you were talking about the different reasons in the beginning, was the um, it, it, it entrepreneurship, honestly. I mean, if you really think about it, there are so many avenues out there to where you can make money, and live streaming happens to be one of them. Um, content creating, you, you're already in the business of, of being content creators, and now you're just putting it into a more video and uh, live streaming form, and you would be blown away, not only blown away, but surprised at the, the, the amount, the, probably the amount of money that you would be able to make from doing. 
Because you said, like, basically, uh, when folks subscribe to, like, Twitch TV and stuff like that, you you said you just got started. You just decided to, like, throw one yeah. up and, and play a game, and then, like, boom, you made, like, a 400 yeah. in a month or something. <laughs> well, I made 100 my very first month. Like, I, it took me about two months to be able to make affiliate to where you're able to make money on Twitch. Okay. Um, you you have to make you have to you have to you know get a certain amount of viewership and build a little bit of a channel before they'll allow you to start making money. But then once you once you get to uh, yeah, I, I usually run around forty five to six thousand kilobytes. Um, but once you get to affiliate, then it opens up you know you people allow the subscriptions and and other things. And every time somebody subscribes to you, they can even use their Amazon Amazon Pr- uh, Prime membership. Yeah. And they get one free membership. That's how they're getting the money from these kids. Is their parents link their Amazon Prime account with their Twitch account, and they get the kids get one free subscription that they can give their favorite content creator every month. And every yeah. time they do, that's two dollars and fifty cents in your pocket. Hmm. Now, have you done any of the YouTube monetization side, or have you fo- I, solely focused I, on Twitch? My YouTube is so small that, like, no, I haven't even had an yeah. opportunity to try to monetize YouTube. But, you know, with even with YouTube live streaming, there's still you can link your PayPal account with it and then people can yeah. donate straight to your PayPal right during the stream. And uh, a lot of a lot of big streamers are moving to YouTube live streaming because of that. Gotcha. Fascinating. Cool. So- and sometimes like you think like starting out like man, like no one's going to watch me. But sometimes all it takes is just being at like streaming the right game at the right time uh-huh. that like might not have popularity right now, but like uh-huh. you got an early and because there's no one else streaming it, everybody's gravitating to you. And that's how some people I've seen out there have gone from like 20 it, viewers to like skyrocketing to like 2000 in like a week. Yep. And it doesn't even have to be a game. I, there are people on Twitch that literally all they do is cook and they are, <laughs> they are making a living doing that. Like, and you got girls that, they sit there and talk to guys, and then they do the uh, what do you call it? MSR, RSMR, whatever. ASMR. ASMR. <laughs> and they're rubbing, they rub their arms up and down on the microphone, and it gives a soothing sound. And people are, are paying their bills for it. Like it's <laughs> like so to think that you couldn't monetize a channel where you built websites or showed what you do for a living. Yeah. Somebody out there is going to find that interesting. All you've got to be is personable whenever they come into your room, and, and then you've got a, a viewer for life. Well, we've even talked about it with uh, like this particular channel. Like we've we've started really focusing on the uh, Tampa Bay WordPress or the WordPress Tampa Bay YouTube channel, and you know making sure that we record our sessions, you know, from our live classes and stuff like that, and our live streaming. I mean, we've got 14 people on the call right now. So, you know, if we actually pushed one of these a little harder and got it outside of just the meetup, we might we could get a lot more. Um, oh. I want to ask a couple more questions, too, on uh, OBS, because I know... It's... And a lot of a lot of the... I'm sorry, I didn't mean to oh, cut no, you go off. Ahead. No, go ahead. And a lot of the big content creators on Twitch will tell you now that it is almost impossible to just start on Twitch and grow on Twitch. They tell you that you have to build content somewhere else and draw people to your Twitch channel. Uh, for instance, uh, one of the guys I watch, he, he has a YouTube channel that took off and became very popular. From that, his Twitch channel has exploded. Like he went from making probably six grand a month, and now he's making 40 grand a month. He just did a video sh- telling everybody what he makes a month doing that. <laughs> yeah. And it's insane. Like, Well, I even noticed like a lot of them will do, um, they'll do like five to ten minute uh, reviews of like, uh, microphones and cameras mm-hmm. and lighting setups and all these kind of things that basically just help people get better with their video setups for like actual video streaming or video conferencing. So, I mean, there's a, there's a whole world out there for all of that, but I would, I did want to ask a couple of questions on specific to OBS because mm-hmm. it's a, it's a more complicated one for me. It was really hard to set up mainly cause I'm just, it, I mean, looking at the screen, I'm looking, I'm going, and I'm sure a lot of people are looking at the screen and are probably well, also going, oh my God, that's really confusing. But it really I, is, though, so you get the basics of it. Like, once you get the understanding of the basics, it, it really isn't. It, I mean, because if you look here, here are my scenes. I was doing it by button. Like, let's, we're on, uh, we're on the starting stream. We'll go to my just chatting. And you so said I'm that the- a lot of those you could get almost pre built. 
with Streamlabs, or was that uh, Stream one of Elements? You can go to Stream Elements. You can go to Nerd or Die. There's actually a lot of YouTube videos. These are all simple to make. I mean, yeah. they're not hard. They, these are a little more. The ones that I have are a little more because they're video, mm -hmm. but all. Basically, once you, you set up your scenes, you see here, you come in here, you would set up a scene. And then once you get into the scene, it's, it's over here is your sources. And this is what you're going to bring into your scene. So you would bring in, you know, your audio input. I've got my mic, so I'll bring over my, my, my existing. Bring over your mic. Want to bring in my, my video. Um, I've already got a camera. But since I'm using it in Skype right now, I can't use it over here. Otherwise, no yeah, you don't want to lose that. <laughs> when I click, when I click that, that would automatically brought my camera up. Um, if I want to do, you know, some of the uh, the background, um, say I wanted to do that, I can bring that in. It's just as a browser source. I already have it saved, so I was able to do that real easy. But all it is is, you know, in Stream Elements, you can go into Stream Elements and um, you can build these on there. Some of they have them some spilled specifically for games. Um, you can get some that are plain, um, but you're just you know like camera boxes. But you could if you if you have any kind of like Photoshop skills, you could do it. You can make your own really easy and quick. Uh, question: What is Streamlabs and how does it differ from OBS uh, by itself? Um, OBS. And Streamlabs is just a platform that goes along with, o that works with OBS. It's like yeah. a, it's, you know, it's kind of where they, they have their, their, it's kind of the same thing that I, I use Stream Elements. Okay. So it's kind of like does the, kind of like simplifies getting set up a little easier. Yeah. Let's see. Yeah. Because when I went today, it was very funny because like it only would allow me to see the, uh, the Mac side of it, not the. Windows side, and then your shows the Windows side. I love that. How that's hilarious. Yeah. So basically, here it just it keeps like like you can see I haven't streamed in like two months, mm -hmm. but they um it would keep track of your stream and your your tips and what you've what people oh, have okay. sub subscribed to you and who's uh donated. It helps you keep track of all that. It, it's also a um they have game overlays. Um, okay. Uh, let's see, they have different overlays that you can choose from okay. that uh, that are game based. They have some that are just color based, so that you don't have. They're not specific to a game. Okay. So, like if they have it in general, um, they have some that are that are um, the static, and then they also have the uh, the video ones. I gotcha. So they could do kind of like a. Like a news at eleven style or something like that. Exactly. <laughs> if you wanted to do like a podcast. Exactly. But essentially, in OBS itself, it's just taking OBS and giving you at a glance views of things going on around your stream, like it's the subscriptions, it. like the chat. Okay. It, it's cool. you to be the producer. It allows you to basically be the producer of your show. Yeah, awesome. So. Okay. Cool. All right. So now I think we're gonna pop over here and talk about Ecamm Live, which is what I'm using. And I think for some reason I lost your... I, hang on a second. Let's do the three up so at least poor Travis isn't all by himself on the screen. <laughs> That's the only problem I couldn't have is when we were sharing your screen, I couldn't put a little bubble down there in the corner. But when mine goes up, I'm actually going to just be going to my desktop. So I'm actually going to do that now so that you guys can see uh, all of that kind of fun. Me, oh, I'm in Skype. Ecamm Live is the Mac version, and it allows you to have four people in through a Skype call, but it's using the NVI platform for Skype, which I think that's starting to open up as a new platform for a bunch of different little video things, which basically allows you to take your communication source and make it restreamable so that you can use it again, like I'm using it now, to have all three of us on the conference at the same time. So I'm going to go into live demo mode on Ecamm Live, and you guys will be able to see my desktop. And you'll kind of see some things that look familiar to what you may have seen on the OBS configuration. Uh, uh, Ecamm Live is 12, I think 12.99. 
a month uh, for the regular version. It's $20 a month for the pro version, which includes uh, being able to use Restream IO and being able to use some more professional options on the list. So I'm going to see if I can pop that back to the... Uh, so what, I, what you're seeing here on the left-hand side is the scenes. I think you can possibly see my little mouse moving over there. Uh, these are the scenes much like uh, Joe was showing where he had the scenes like, you know, here's the title screen that we did at the beginning. My audio kicked out here, obviously, because that scene has absolutely no sound on it. He sit in there saying howdy, howdy. And, uh, and you can also see down here below that these are the overlays. These are where the text is that shows up. So like down here we have the Jim True and then we've got the WP Tampa bay.org over to the right. Um, I can also change to my desk camera. So if I wanted to do a, a demo of some kind of like making things or, or painting things or doing some sort of odd thing, I can do that over here as well, I have, uh, which is kind of nice. It's not a bad setup to do. Uh, all of my cameras are in here. I also have like the Skype screen share, which is what we use to show off uh, Joe's camera. Um, I also have, like I said, the overlays, which are visible through the whole process. Let me go back to one. What I'm showing here is my title opening screen and down below is the list of overlays that I have available to me. Uh, the text overlays, I can turn them off and on. Uh, this here is the going live countdown timer. Uh, right below that is a list of the camera screens that I have available, including the people that have called, dialed into the call. Uh, over here to the right is where I actually can control my camera settings for my current camera. Let me switch to that now to show you how that camera works. I can zoom and pan so I can make it more properly centered if I want to, which I kind of like. Uh, you've also got additional picture settings if I need to change the brightness. Camera options I can turn on green screen. Um, down here is the sound levels and you'll notice over here too we have a little comments box which is where I can pull comments in from my YouTube Live or Facebook Live. And uh, this down here is just my Skype window. So that's pretty much it. It's I find it incredibly easy to use uh, as a Mac goes because it we glitched out here we and go. lost uh, actually everything, Wi-Fi, the I whole think. bit. So that's why we have the little strange interruption here. Sorry about that, guys. Here we go. I think we're back. <laughs> so... Hopefully you guys didn't lose too much from that conversation. I had, I think I'd pretty much finished up on showing the demo of my local screen. So I like Ecamm Live because it's just easy to use. It was pretty easy to configure and fairly easy to set everything back up. And Elaine says, I can see you in three, hear you. So I think we're okay. All right, so that was our discussion on software-based streaming. So let's, oh, I need wrong screen. Go back to the demo. Yeah, there we go. So now we're going to talk about equipment recommendations, specifically webcams, uh, sorry, like cameras, microphones, and lighting. Uh, now in the, micro, in the camera world, most webcams nowadays are actually pretty good on your desktop, and they're perfectly fine for video conferencing. Uh, the ones that I t tend to use or recommend is like the Logitech C920 Plus. That's what I've got up here because it, it does a 1080p off the bat. Um, if you're going to use a DSLR instead, then that means that, you know a digital SLR camera. Anything is better than a webcam and the DSLR range, but you need to make sure, the most important thing is you have to make sure that it has a clean HDMI output. That What that means is that typically if you've ever used a DSLR camera, all of the exposure and the speed settings and light settings and the shutter settings and your battery level is all displayed on the back LCD display. That's what's going to be streaming to your camera because that's what you're seeing through the DSLR. So you have to be able to like do a clean output of that, which is called clean HDMI, in order to connect it as your video input for your live stream or video conferencing. Um, most Canons are pretty cheap nowadays. Uh, GoPros are fine if you're going to be doing something where you're going to be showing a gigantic room and like maybe like a fitness class or something like that. Tell, I mean, your your the cameras on these guys are actually pretty good, and most of them can be configured to do live stream as well. Um, when it comes to microphones, this is where I'm going to turn it over to the sound guy, to Joe. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> 
microphones, uh, you're always going to be, you're always, you're, you're always going to sound better with an XLR. If you don't want to go XLR or you don't have the space, you're, you're looking for USB. Um, anything from the Blue Yeti, Blue Yeti Nano, um, Blue, Blue makes an excellent microphone all the way around the board. I, I will back anything with, with the word Blue on it. <laughs> um, Blue Yeti, Blue Nano, for the price, they're, they're going to have a, a really good sound. Another good one is um, the Samson G-Track. Um, it's a great condenser mic. It's about $165. Now you're starting to step up a little bit more. Um, XLR mics, it, that, the, the biggest part of your money is going to be on your soundboard and your microphone. Um, and those just depends on what you want, what you're looking for. You can get a Shure M was it m48 for like 40 bucks which is a great dynamic mic it's not going to pick up a lot of background noise like your condenser mics will um that's the big difference between condenser and dynamic um is you, the condenser mic is great for the sound quality but it's always going to pick up a lot of more of your background noise the dynamic um it, it, it'll it'll help cut out the background noise. You can set up the gate to, to get to eliminate most of your background noise with a dynamic mic. There again, it just goes like. And then we were talking about, uh, you know, encoding. In order to, for it to live stream or in order for it to put it into video, there's an amount of encoding that goes on. And for it to break it down, anything over a hundred dollar price range on a microphone. And you're you're pretty much just wasting it for live streaming because it it gets anything over that hundred dollar mark and your your sound quality is it's getting cut back from encoding to the point that it's not worth spending the extra money. Got it. Well, like most of the ones, like even the blue, like I think the blue Yeti's running a special where it includes the boom arm and the little shock mm -hmm. thingy that spins around the top of it. Shock mount. Yeah, and all of those things are basically designed to reduce, uh, like, like if I hit my desk, <laughs> vibrate. Yeah, vibration noises and all that other kind of stuff. Uh, so when it all comes down to, and the XLR basically means it's got a, its own little audio input box, right? Yeah, it's got the well, it's got the it, it'll it's this this cable right here is called it like on the back of my microphone. It's 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 an XLR cable, and basically from that, then you're gonna have to have a sound interface. So mm. you know, a soundboard. You can get a cheap $50 Yamaha soundboard and you're going to sound perfect. As long as it has a USB interface so that you can plug it into your to the USB on your computer, you'll sound good. Is that like the Roadmaster? That doesn't sound right. I know there was a couple of them that I've seen ads for recently. They have the USB. They can well, like... Uh, go ahead. You've got... You've got the Shure 7 M seven B or M7B or something like that that like the the podcast mic, which is an expensive mic. You don't, you don't, you don't have to go that expensive. Got it. Okay, cool. It's like a, it's like almost a $400 mic. And then our, our last discussion is really on lighting and <clears throat> natural lights best. If you can get it, if you've got light in your room that actually is up light and can bounce around ceilings and stuff and reduce shadows. That's what I use here. That's why I don't have a lot of extra shadow lights around my eyes and things. And they're granted, you know, coming from a lighting world, ideally you'd want at least a ring light coming in this direction to fill in any additional light. I think that's what you're using, right, Joe? Um, I well, I have a an umbrella. The, yeah, you got uh, an umbrella boom or so, yeah, yeah. And and that's kind of it. Like if you can be I've near, put a different lens on my camera and moved my camera, and so like my you can tell my lighting on my amp, my glasses isn't right. So yeah. I need to. I need to actually adjust since I've done that change. <laughs> well, that's another thing too, is that making sure that you're actually looking at the camera when you talk to people, which I have a really hard time doing too, because I keep looking at the guys on the screen instead of looking at the camera. And you know, when you're having the conversation, when you're talking about things, it's easy to do when you're in a room full of people. It's harder to do when you're physically doing a video conference or a live stream. So it's something to just get used to doing. And a lot of it comes down to, too, is that if you've got good sound, if you've got a good camera that lights you well, and you're looking at the camera, that's going to make most of the differences when it comes down to your quality. And I think our next slide is questions. So, all right, folks, any questions out there? 
I haven't seen any yet. Yeah. <laughs> see a lot of discussion about the buffering and the glitching out. Yeah. Yeah. So, hmm. Uh, do you guys have any questions as far as like, as far as like what, you know, framework and stuff? What might be the best to get somebody started? It just yeah, I. <laughs> I think we've asked a lot during the call that we haven't like really talked about. Uh, you know what kind of questions might be coming through. There's like no questions at all. I'm gonna do any questions out there. <laughs> New question came in from Elaine. Great question. Yeah. She says, "Why did you glitch? Let me see. Yeah, why'd you glitch? I have no idea, Lane. I have a feeling that my uh, processor got over overridden ridden by all the things running on it right now. That's the only reason I know is because I was in demo mode, and honestly, it lost my Wi-Fi. That's why mine stopped. So next time, I would probably try to find a a LAN or a wired connection in, so I could work in that direction. And that was the only question we have. That makes this a lot easier. <laughs> Gonna make it a real short talk then. Um, yeah, none, no questions. How do you guys feel about the whole Zoom thing and the Zoom bombing and how and how slow Zoom has been to respond to making their pro their platform more secure? Any thoughts on that? I wouldn't be against not using Zoom anymore. As would I. So I yeah. know that the paid version, supposedly, it's a little better. Uh, Rick asked a question. Did I miss when you talked about the setup you've used for this video? Uh, no, Rick, you. Uh, that was actually when I was showing the Ecamm Live. Uh, you do have to have a Mac to use it. That's the problem, is the configuration. Um, but it does kind of the same thing OBS does. It just does it in a more Mac-friendly way. As the big difference and I was showing that in the demo it actually I think I actually demoed all of it before we glitched so yep I got it a little bit so how does Ecamm live handle audio how does Ecamm live handle audio it creates mm -hmm. uh, multiple little channels uh, okay. so I've got one here for my blue snowbell it has the ability to do its own channel for when I was doing the, the movie demos so I can actually stream a video through my uh, thing as well. And then our Skype is actually its own channel. I was noticing on the buffer on that one, on the audio levels, they were going too high. So I took it down a little bit into the yellow range instead. So hopefully our our audios will all kind of be closer in sync than they were on the, on the prior calls. Uh, for filming a church service. Okay, so let me see. Rick had asked, I'm curious about the software you're actually using. And that software, Rick, is yeah. Ecamm Live. Uh, we have another question from Anja Carlson. Uh, what's the best platform for filming a church service? So OBS does recording as well. That's a free software. Um, yeah, that one is mostly going to be about you're wanting to get the person who's actually physically on the pulpit. The most important person during the church service is the person doing the talking and and making sure that they're being picked up by the remainder of the people in the, in the office mm -hmm. in the in the congregation. The congregation doesn't typically talk, so I can't imagine how are, how are the how have most of the church has been doing that. Do you guys know? I've actually helped a couple setting up OPS. Uh, pretty much, what are they doing? Are they like they're not? They're obviously not having the congregation there, but do they have like the choir and a uh, singing in through Zoom or something? <laughs> it's, usually, it's usually not like the preacher and his wife and kids. Okay. And they, they, they play piano and sing. And... Okay. Yeah, Jen's got a question, has a comment on here as well. She goes, she knows, all, she knows a lot of churches use OBS, important because you might find some user groups or communities of admin people. So, okay. Uh, and if you guys. But that is just like. Oh, go ahead, Travis. That's definitely just as importantly like a hardware question because like if say we were not in a unforeseen time uh -huh. and uh, we, we had full like churches, like you might want to have like a multi-camera setup and you might yeah. not want to do like a webcam. You might want to have like proper DSLRs. So you'd want to yeah. make sure you'd have the right hardware to bring those sources in 
and especially the right hardware, you'd probably want to use a PC at that point if you don't have like a very high powered Mac because handling multiple video inputs at once and stuff is very CPU and GPU yeah. heavy. Well, and also too, when you're recording, like if we weren't in quarantine times, this was if this was the before times, you would definitely want to have a multi-camera setup on the choir, probably a couple of like at least getting crowd shots to see how large the congregation is, and then some specifically set up on the choir with good microphones picking up their, their uh, singing, obviously. Which for um, that part, you could probably just pull in off of whatever soundboard is running yeah. the sound for the actual church. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Now, Steve uh, Curtis asked another question: Is can you screen share? share blah, blah, blah. Can you screen share with Skype? Yes, Steve. Uh, when we did the uh, when we brought in OBS uh, as an example as a demo, that was actually Joe's screen share through Skype. That's how I was able to pull it into my Ecamm Live. Uh, we have another question from Anja. She says uh, our last one they filmed just the pastor and the organist. And they pre-recorded it, but I would think that a live stream would be better. I think that honestly just depends on how how polished they want the 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 uh, the show to be. Because <laughs> like when we do the talks, um, when we video the talks at our at the uh, Sun Coast, I tend to not edit them down. But if we have like uh, technical failures or I glitch up during conversations or if I'm having to sync my slides with the, the person who's actually doing the presentation, I will go through and edit those and I definitely always fix the sound on those particular things with my uh, sound software because the sound is always bad in a room compared to sitting here in a studio talking. Um, I would say like you would only want to do a true live stream if you want to interact with the audience because if not you could just pre-record it especially like for a church you could you might want to do it on youtube you could pre-record it and do a premiere on youtube where that recorded video is just they kind of like live stream out that recorded video and then people can interact in the chat there yep. real time yeah and donate money so yeah. jen was my comment was for churches before covid times and yes they had multi-cam and running through soundboard got it okay cool all right um, I know for like a lot of the folks that were like, if you've seen any of the, like, uh, Stephen Colbert or any of those guys and like, uh, all of those particular shows, a lot of them are either using OBS or they might be using Ecamm Live because they're all on Macs, uh, as well. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And Jen has another comment too about many, con many churches are continuing to use OBS now and even Facebook Live for more in-the-moment or casual moments, which makes sense. That's the biggest thing about doing any kind of a thing that's streamed or live, is you've got more opportunity for interactivity. And interactivity is big because that keeps your audience engaged. So kind of like you guys are right now. We have you captured. So. <laughs> but don't overthink it and feel like you need to live stream. It doesn't make sense for everybody. No, not at all. Yeah. yeah I mean... No. <laughs> if I mean, I would have thought about doing the Zoom stuff with us, but we needed to go to YouTube and we needed to have you guys interacted. And I don't like having to like turn around and re-video stuff, so that's kind of why I didn't do Zoom. Uh, and I like having a more professional-looking setup if we can. Uh, nowhere near as professional as Joe's with all his little video stuff, but <laughs> maybe one of these days I'll get there. You know? <laughs> That's how I did it, piece by piece. <laughs> yep, yep. Uh, let's see. Okay. All right, so anyway, I think, are we getting any other questions? I see a comment that says, Rick says, I have the $15 Zoom account, and I just streamed to YouTube. Okay, well, I don't know how you did it, because according to their system, you cannot stream to YouTube as a webinar without paying $40 for that add-on. So you can push it after the fact. So... Didn't smile. <laughs> I can definitely like recommend though on the Mac, like for audio. I've always found loopback to be like very powerful, which will allow you to create uh, virtual audio sources. Mm. So you could do stuff like yes, like Ecamm Live can like pull in the audio, but like say you were doing your screencast right. and you were like playing audio through it, I could not hear it. Right. So with like loopback, you could create a virtual audio source that's like a mix of your mic. And like your your applications, and then send it to us on Skype, and then we'd be able to hear it. 
Yeah, and I think that's kind of the difference with OBS because you guys are act most OBS people are using Zoom for their chat piece, aren't they? Uh, no. No. Well, I guess Zoom? you don't typically bring in guests. That's the thing. No, I've, no. They, most of the ones I've seen where they have guests on Twitch yeah. are using OBS. They're like Dungeons and Dragons, like the live role play stuff, and they've got full soundboards and mixing and everything else. Uh, I've heard of Crowdcast, Patricia. That's another one. Um, I did not look at it because there was way too many that I had to cover already. So uh, she says, I came in late, but a speaker I follow uses Crowdcast. Crowdcast is another video conferencing webinar specific software. Yeah. So I can't give you much feedback on that one, unfortunately, because like I said, I looked at so many that I kind of over my brain was jelly. Um, let's You're see, gonna... Steve. Oh, go ahead, Joe. Yeah, I'm sorry. No, go ahead. <laughs> no, you go ahead. Your, your show, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> you were saying so. So it's okay. Okay. So Steve has dropped in and says, "Can we live stream with just Skype through YouTube?" Uh, no. You actually do have to have some software that can feed the stream out to your uh, streaming platform. So, like uh, Rick was saying earlier. He says that you can, you know, you can use Zoom and you can stream the the content out, but you have to have their webinar add-on. Uh, so if you did, Steve, well, if you did want to do something like that, you probably want to look at StreamYard. Uh, Skype does not have the ability to broadcast to YouTube. You can, but if you're doing it, it, you can record it and then upload that recording to YouTube. But if you're wanting to stream, you actually need to use uh, one of the streaming softwares. Uh, go ahead. But if you're doing something very simple where you just want to capture Skype, like you're not doing overlays or anything, you might just want to do a Google Hangout because that will automatically like record and share to YouTube. Yeah, you can set it to. It doesn't have yeah. to. <laughs> well, that was the weird thing because Hangouts used to have all of the overlay features. They used to have the ability to do the split screens and the whole bit, and all of that went away. So they got out of the streaming business and have completely gone to YouTube Live, and they don't provide any tools to do that stuff with. They work with all the other tools, but they don't provide those anymore. So um, It's just crazy to see like all the options that are out there nowadays. Because mm -hmm. oh, like, yeah. when I was doing this heavily, it was like on the Mac, you, your choices, choices were like Boinks TV, which still exists as like, uh, I was showing it to you, Jim, as like Nemo TV or something. Yeah. And uh, there was that in Wirecast. And then on Windows, it was pretty much only like BitBlaster was like the main thing. Well, OBS has been free since day one, but I yeah. just couldn't get it configured right because I there was so much tuning I had to do that I just couldn't configure it right. I played with it for a while and just gave up. And then I found Ecamm Live, and I got to Ecamm Live one month too late. It was the month before that they were a, a paid prescription. Uh, you bought the software. And then the month after that, it went to monthly. So I got I got screwed. <laughs> but I do like it. It works really well. But I might look at OBS again through Streamlabs now because if I can simplify that process, because that's, that's the biggest piece of all of this is uh, trying to get the, uh, trying to get the configuration to work, getting your cameras working properly, getting your sound working properly, and setting up all your scenes and stuff like that. Uh, yeah, Anja, we uh, we said it a couple times through the thing. It's Ecamm Live on the Mac is the one we're using. Um, and that's the one I used for the Ask Us Anything last uh, two weeks ago as well. So. Ecamm Live on the Mac. And Ecamm Live is a Mac-only software right now. And I don't know if they're ever going to come up with a PC version. So, uh, any other questions? I don't see any more coming through. So, we currently have 12 viewers. So, and we're at 7:30. We might actually end early tonight. Not a bad thing. You kind of reached on a uh, Jim. You or not Jim? Uh, what's your name, Travis? Yes. Yeah, Travis had kind of reached on something a little bit there too. Once you get into evolved it. Once you, uh, if you get into streaming, and one thing you're going to have to be uh, in tune with is uh, how much you're doing, because it does take a lot of CPU and a lot of GPU usage in order to play, you know, I, for me to do a single PC stream, 
for the games that I play, I've, I have to have a beast of a computer in order to yeah. do it single PC. A lot of people do a dual PC. You can do a yeah. two PC setup um, where you're playing your game on one and streaming from the other. Yeah. Um, but then you that involves a capture card. So mm-hmm. yeah, I've I've watched a lot of those particular videos on YouTube, and it's just like. I'm going, oh, my God, I definitely don't want to go that direction. It's just it's too much processor heavy. So for me, I primarily want to use it for doing demos with, showing how to do things, having conversations with other people, and not doing, obviously, never, ever doing the Ecamm Live demo thing again that brought my, my machine down. But uh, <laughs> I went I went total nerd. I went the i9, overclocked it, and uh, walk-pooled it. And so we're good. There you go. <laughs> there you go. So... Well, I'm glad this went well. Uh, thank you, everyone out there in the Tampa Bay WordPress world for coming. Uh, we are having another uh, meeting in May. We have two, actually, in May. Uh, let me get my calendar up so I've got the right dates, at least. Yeah. The first one will be in two weeks on Cinco de Mayo, May 5th, where we oh, will be 5th, doing it? Ask, yeah. Yeah. We'll be doing our usual first of the month, Ask Us Anything. Mm-hmm. Bring your questions. We will, as long as they are answered within... At most 15 minutes, we will get an answer for you. Yeah. We'll bring the whole crowd again. And then two weeks after that, on May, what date was that for yours? Travis? May 19th. May 19th. You want to tell yeah. us what you're going to do? Yeah, we're going to be doing an advanced, instead of the previously scheduled talk, we're going to be just doing an open advanced Gravity Forms workshop where I will be sitting down and answering your questions about all things Gravity Forms or kind of web forms in general. Because most general web forms things can be applied to gravity forms. Yeah, it'll probably be a two upper on that one. It'll just be Jim and uh, Travis for that one, and we'll do uh, we'll take questions from the audience. I'll let him drive the main piece of it. But if we need to do other demos while I'm pulling questions up, we've got both of our computers, and we both work for gravity forms, so should be pretty fun. <laughs> All right, guys, I'm gonna roll our oh big one. Make sure you like and subscribe uh, this video down below, the little doobly-doos. There'll be a little like button and a little thumb up button. And, uh, you know, subscribe and hit the bell notification to be notified of everything. And we will see you in two weeks on Cinco de Mayo. And no, I'm not going to wear anything Spanish, but I might have some margaritas that night. We'll see. And I'm going to fire off our... uh, First off, Joe, thank you for coming out. I know we didn't didn't get to talk about you doing this at a strip club, but can you give us the the strip club voice if you want to? You know. All right, gentlemen. One more time. Put them hands together. Make some noise out there. Yep, see? Got his DJ voice going. And uh, Travis, again, thank you for joining the call and helping out in all this little stuff. And I'm glad this worked out. And I'm going to kick off our end cap video and thank you, everyone out there in the audience, uh, all 14 or 15 of you, and uh, we will see you in two weeks. Stay safe. Thank you for watching our recorded session from WordPress St. Pete Meetup. We meet twice a month on the first and third Tuesdays in downtown St. Pete at the Suncoast Developers Guild. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up on YouTube and be sure to subscribe and click the bell to be notified when new videos are added. Find out more about WordPress St. Petersburg at our website at wptampabay.org.